So how does the 2023 Toro Super Recycler mow? Well, they don't call it a super recycler for nothing. Mulching capabilities are superb to say the least, leaving you with a really nice cut. The kickers underneath the deck do an outstanding job re-diverting the clippings back into the blade to be recycled into your lawn, pushing that much needed nitrogen back down into the turf where it belongs. This delivers a super clean cut without a mess of clippings piled up on the lawn. And even if the grass is a little taller or a little thicker, it still manages to do its job well. In mulch mode, it really does take a lot for this mower to leave lumps on the lawn. While I am a big fan of mulching, the lawn can sometimes get away from you. It can get pretty tall and out of control fast. And bagging on this Toro is top notch. Switching over to bag mode on this model isn't too complicated. Press in on the tab on the mulch plug, lift up, and out it comes. Then just simply hook on your bag on the back and you're ready to go. In my experience, if the bag itself inflates while mowing, that's a good indicator that most, if not all, of the clippings will wind up inside the bag. And that's exactly the case with this bagger. It forms a nice tight seal and the bag itself is plenty big enough to fit loads of clippings inside. Now on cheaper mowers, a mower itself when the bag starts to fill up will start to feel rear heavy. And on this mower, that is not the case. This mower is very well balanced and I did not feel that rear heaviness as the bag began to fill up. Side discharging really impressed me on this model. Now once you register the model, doing that'll probably wind you up on an email list. You can then have Toro send you your side discharge chute. They probably do this to reduce cost. And if not everybody wants a side discharge chute or registers their mower, that's less they gotta put in the box, right? And ultimately less they gotta produce. I think we're onto your game, Toro. Lift the flap up, drop the chute right in, and it points to the left. This is a big chute, and it launches clippings farther than any 21-inch mower I've ever seen. It actually shot it farther than the old Time Master, and that thing had a bigger motor. I actually put my leg in front of this chute a couple of times when I had to steer this unit around, and let me tell you, there is a lot of air coming out of this chute forcing the clippings away. Feel the power! I do wish that they extended this panel out about another inch or two. That way my legs weren't getting blasted with clippings when I'm doing certain turns. Regardless, this three-in-one gets it done. By the way, hey guys and gals, welcome to Garage Gear. I'm JB, giving you the best tips and tricks to survive life in and out of the garage. And help this video get it done with the YouTube algorithm, would you mind taking a super quick second to hit that like button down below? Thank you very much. Now there's a lot of positives on this lawnmower. Here's what I like on it. To me, when I get behind this lawnmower, it feels so much bigger than an actual 21 inch mower. Something about the aluminum deck, the wheel alignment, and the overall weight of this unit makes it feel very solid as you push it around your yard. The 190cc Briggs & Stratton engine cranks out plenty of power. Tall grass doesn't stand a chance with this thing. I purposely aimed this unit at some tall grass and it didn't even bog down at all. Not even once. It wasn't even phased by it. Obviously your conditions may vary, but this thing just sliced and kept going. Pretty cool. What's also pretty cool is that I filled this gas tank up to the bottom of the pipe and it cut my entire 10,000 square foot lawn and it still had fuel left in the tank. Next, this unit has to have the fastest electric start I've ever seen. This thing starts up faster than your car, guaranteed. Within two seconds, this mower is up and running at full speed every single time. Watch this. Now in my experience, I typically see electric starters fail after a handful of years, so it's probably a good idea to keep that thing charged up once in a while with the cord that they provided. Regardless, this is a nice feature that operates at lightning speed. This unit also pull starts in one to two pulls, not too shabby. The personal pace feature on this mower is very fast. You can control your speed nicely with this drive system. The faster you walk, the faster it'll go, and it'll go if you let it. What was nice to see is that this mower still cut well even at higher speeds, and the larger back wheels make this unit easier to push and easier to steer. Height adjusters on each individual wheel are simple and effective as they've always been. Many new mowers have a gizmo nowadays for a one-touch height adjustment, but they don't always hold their height so well. This old style method of individual height adjusters on each wheel is tried and true. Going all the way down to one inch and all the way up to four inches. That's pretty nice. And here's a cool secret about super recycler height adjusters. You can actually take this height adjuster and move it above the four inch mark by setting it all the way here on the edge and this little lip here will kind of hold the clip in place. Now if you hit a big Bump, it might shift on you, but it does allow you to mow a little bit taller. That allows you to mow some super tall grass. That's kind of nice if the grass gets really overgrown. Beyond that, putting this mower in the stow position does allow for better storage and it makes it easier to clean. Now here's what grinds my gears with this super recycler. Let's talk about the big one first, the one thing that many others have talked about that have owned this same model, the engine. This engine has had significant issues with sputtering and that is an understatement. Obviously the Briggs & Stratton engines of yesteryear are going to outlast 
anything new nowadays. These engines aren't built quite as good as they used to be. And after reading countless reports and many reviews on this model, the common culprit for this sputtering seems to be the spark plug boot wire. Many have said that this boot either was loose when they opened this mower up out of the box, or it came loose as they were mowing. So if that is you and you are suffering from that same issue, try pushing that boot in all the way as far as you can and see how that goes for you. I'm happy to report that I checked mine as soon as I got it. I ensured that that boot was fully in, it's fully secure, and my unit did not sputter, not even one. If I do have any issues with sputtering on future uses, what I will do is I will pin that information down below in the comments. Another thing on these engines that I do not agree with are these plastic carburetors. Many companies are now shifting this direction. I don't agree with it. They really should stick with what works. Alongside the engine, there's also a sticker that says no oil changes. I'm going to strongly recommend against that. Change the oil at least once a season. You wouldn't do that to your car now, would you? I think somebody over at Briggs and & Stratton and Toro needs a talking to. Now lawn equipment nowadays is full of gimmicks. This new Vortex technology is one of them. It has a big metal grill up front and it narrows down to a one inch hole underneath the deck. This hole could become clogged or blocked with wet grass, rendering it useless. And in my experience, this super recycler mulches just as good as older super recyclers that never had this feature. Now Toro may have done scientific tests on this, but I really didn't see a difference. This is kind of like having 19 cup holders in your car. Nice to have, but you don't really need them. Right next to that, right out of the box, this mower rides on three wheels. And let me be clear here that the cement blocks on this floor are generally pretty flat. Many people have mentioned this in reviews and this seems to be a common problem between the deck and the height adjusters. If you ask me, this shouldn't even be an issue. All four wheels should be in full contact with the ground at all times. Lastly, the handlebars. I hate this whole thing. I like personal pace, but I hate this design. This has to be one of the worst handlebars I've ever walked behind. This is just so bulky. 12 and a half inches, 20 inches by eight inches. This whole thing could be significantly reduced. I've complained about this before. I've walked into this bar so many times and these corners here stick out so far. This actually made going along my fence difficult and I feared that I was gonna clip one of the fence posts bending it out of place. I still feel like I'm pushing a baby stroller across my lawn with this giant rainbow handle and the fact that this this mower only has two height adjustments for the entire handlebar setup is pretty lame. And if you are a heavier person, you're gonna be forced to mow with outstretched arms like this because this beam will bump into your stomach. Whoever designed this should be drug out into the street and shot. Toro absolutely needs to go back to the drawing board on this one. Now, as we put our last couple stripes in the lawn with this Toro Super Recycler review, if cut quality is what you're after, this mower will deliver for you. If you have a tall or thick lawn, this mower will plow right through it. Plus, it'll get your lawn done in a relatively quick amount of time. And for more information on this Toro Super Recycler, I'll have the unboxing video linked down below in the description for you. That's better. The garage is getting pretty cold in the winter time. For more cool garage gear content, click or tap the screen right here. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the garage.